Eunice Hulihan. I am a family physician working at Millbrook Family Practice, Mental Health West Medical Practice. So we're going to talk today about anxiety disorders. So the first question is, what is anxiety? Anxiety is a common reaction to a threat or a danger. It can alert us about something going wrong and prepare us to pay attention to our environment. When anxiety becomes very excessive and starts causing either somatic symptoms or behavioral issues like avoidance of situations and circumstances, it becomes a mental health problem. Anxiety compromises an umbrella of different disorders, so we're going to explain the most common ones. The most common one is the one called generalized anxiety disorder, it's what the people know as anxiety. And usually uh, it happens earlier in life, and it's an excessive worry about, or excessive worry or excessive anxiety about circumstances in our normal life, but that become persistent almost with daily symptoms for at least six months. People with general anxiety disorder usually start having an impact in their social life, in their work, or in the school performance. So that's when they start looking for help. Agoraphobia is an intense fear to different circumstances. One of them could be being alone. Another one could be in a crowd or being in a line in a supermarket or being in an open space like a, when you go and see the ocean, being in a public transportation or being in an enclosed space. So these people when they are in that circumstance they fear prevent them to go to any of those places or stay in those circumstances. And it is always that people who have recurrent and unexpected episodes of intense fear, having somatic symptoms, and the fear is out of the proportion to the circumstances. Most of the symptoms that the person experiences are chest pain, shortness of breath, numbness, tingling, feeling of paralysis, or feeling like they are outside their own body or they are in a dream. Symptoms last sometimes minutes or hours. Also, symptoms of choking or shaking or trembling can be symptoms of a panic attack, and there is no organic cause causing these symptoms. The social anxiety disorder is people who has an intense fear of anxiety to be with social interactions or performance, as like when they have to do a presentation or they have to sing. The phobia related disorder is another kind of anxiety and this kind of anxiety is also causing an intense fear to circumstances that is out of proportion to the circumstance but is specific for that person. For example, some people have fear of flying, or fear of flying, fear of blood, fear of injections, fear of heights, or fear of certain animals. But the fear is and most of the time it's just only to a specific trigger that causes the fear or causes the symptoms. And the last one is the separation anxiety disorder, that is the anxiety or worry that the person may have when they feel that they're going to lose the contact with the person that they're attached to. The most common one is the children anxiety disorder, when they feel scared that the parents or the caregiver it's going to be away from them, but also happen in adults. And it can be to the caregiver or the person who will give them the most emotional support. As I said before, of all of them, the most common one is the generalized anxiety disorder. That's what is called or what people know as anxiety. So that's more prevalent in women and usually start having symptoms earlier in life before the people turn 20. But it's a disease that is chronic and develops slowly, so the symptoms start escalating to a point when the person really starts having issues with their social life, work or school, and they look for help. 
So time gives fluctuates during times, during life. So at some point in their life they're well, and then something triggers the anxiety again, and they start having anxiety symptoms. And it's the most common disorders in patients over 65 years old. Generalized anxiety disorder is a multifactorial uh, disease. There is different things that have been showing that can predispose somebody to have generalized anxiety disorder. One is genetic, so there has been some genes that has been identified. And families usually that they have history of anxiety, they can have children or relatives with anxiety. Also, there are some developmental issues that can cause anxiety, and one of them is usually the childhood and is being separated from the parents when they're younger, or not having enough emotional support when they're younger, or they're having chronic mental illness or chronic medical illness or being exposed to extreme poverty that can increase the risk of a child to develop anxiety in the future. Also, having adverse life events during childhood to adolescence can increase the risk of a person to develop anxiety. And there also has been neuropsychological factors, studies that they have done in the, in the MRIs that they show that people with anxiety become more alert of the environment compared to regular people at the same trigger. So maybe the brain is acting overactive to respond to any possible danger. The person that have generalized anxiety disorder may experience panic attacks, but not necessarily, and can be associated with depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder as a complication can cause the person to be at increased risk for substance abuse. Sometimes people, when they have anxiety, they take substance like alcohol or drugs to diminish the symptoms. Also, they can have increased risk of depression. Anxiety and depression goes hand in hand, so people cannot control the anxiety and they become depressed, secondary to that also can be associated with obsessive compulsive disorder and people who have generalized anxiety disorder have a decreased cardiovascular health. Anxiety can increase increase your heart rate and also increase your blood pressure and people with anxiety usually have less cardiovascular health than people without anxiety. Now let's gonna talk about prevention. So how we can prevent this? One of the most important things with anxiety is please don't isolate yourself. It's good to talk to your family, talk to your friends, and look for a provider who you can talk about your symptoms. Even though you may not want to have medication for anxiety, there is other alternative treatments that can be given, and even therapy alone or chat rooms can help with the condition. Increase your physical activity. It has been demonstrated that people who exercise at least 30 minutes five times a day have less anxiety, less panic attacks, and also yoga has demonstrated to improve anxiety. Avoid caffeine because caffeine can increase the risk of anxiety. Avoid alcohol and substances because they can emasquerate or make the symptoms worse. You're thinking that you're treating yourself and makes better just for a short period of time. Also learning relaxation techniques and learning breathing techniques can help while the person has the anxiety attack to be able to control the symptoms without medications. And consider the participation in support groups that they are in person and also there are chat rooms available in which people talk about their anxieties, their symptoms, and support each other during these symptoms of crisis. Let's gonna talk now about the symptoms of anxiety. So the symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder that is the most common kind of anxiety is people feel like an apprehension, they have muscle tension, irritability, headaches, gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, cramping, 
and sometimes headaches, sleep disturbance, insomnia, and they can have or not panic attacks. When a person has a panic attack, usually it comes suddenly, and the most common symptoms are palpitations, chest pain, shortness of breath, feeling of choking, sudoration, shakiness, tembler, feeling like a you are out of yourself or feeling like you are in a dream. Some people feel like a paralysis or weakness of part of the body. Chills, dizziness, and an intense fear of death, like they're gonna die at any time. You also need to be checked in by a doctor if you have these symptoms because some people can have these symptoms. I have a serious medical condition, but when you have been seen by a provider, and they have ruled out any organic cause and these symptoms are persistent and recurrent, you're suffering for a panic disorder. Let's gonna talk now about the treatment. So the treatment for anxiety, general anxiety disorder, compromise two treatments. It can be medications or could be psychotherapy or could be both recommended that first you talk to your provider about what goals do you want and how open you are to any of these treatments. Some people prefer medication, some people prefer psychotherapy, and some people are ready to get both at the same time and also there are botanicals and supplements that may help. So talking about psychotherapy, the most common one is the cognitive behavioral therapy and that's when you're gonna be talking with the therapy and they're gonna discuss different patterns of your thought regarding danger or regarding the circumstances and how you respond to them. Uh, usually that takes time, this weeks to month to change the way that you think about certain circumstances and the way you respond to the circumstances. Another one is called mindfulness, and mindfulness is like a relaxation techniques are about to decrease your stress. Then regarding medication, there are different medications. Uh, there is one of them that they call the first line, and the first line is the most common ones. Uh, one of them is called the SSRIs, that is the serotonin receptors inhibitors. And the most common ones are paroxetine, sertraline, citalopram, citalopram. The Another one that is common is the norepinephrine receptor inhibitors and the most common ones are dinoxetine, relapacin. There is also medication, another medication that is an ansiolytic that is used as a first line therapy called Buspiro. As a second line therapy, when these medications have failed or you have side effects, your doctor can prescribe a medication called imipramine. Some doctors prescribe gabapentin, but that's not FDA approved, and hydroxyzine. And there are medications that are only for anxiety, anxiolytics, that are called the benzodiazepines, and they are the most common, alprazolam and clonazepam. So regarding the medication that I talked first about, the first line medications, are medications that are gonna treat generalized anxiety disorder, and it's gonna prevent that you get so out of shape or also stress out that you start having symptoms. Those medications are recommended to be given for at least 12 months. And if you're gonna stop them, they have to be tapered down and stop them by your provider. In the past, they were given those medications for six months and they noticed that some people, when they stop the medications, months later, they start having symptoms again of anxiety. And the medications that we call ansiolytics, Ideally, those benzodiazepines are only short acting when you are having a panic attack or when you're, you have tried many medications and psychotherapy and nothing has worked. The problem with benzodiazepines like clonazepam or prazolam is that those medications are highly addictive and the medication you stop them suddenly, you can have withdrawal symptoms and it's very difficult to combine with any other medication. While you're taking any of these anxiety medications, you are recommended to avoid alcohol. And before you drive or before you operate machinery, first check how the medication makes you feel. And for younger adults, the one called 
serotonin receptors inhibitors that the most common one prescriber can increase the risk of depression or suicidal thought. So those medications have to be started by a doctor and be follow up. Now let's gonna talk about alternative medicine that so many people wanna try. So the most common one is called CAVA. And CAVA has been used in the past but can cause liver problems. So we recommend it to people not to use it. Lavender oil is very benign. St. John Worth also can be used, it's over the counter. But if you're using any of the other medications that is prescribed by the doctor, you have to let them know because they interact with the anxiety medications. Passion flower and valeriana is also used and they are most of them with very few side effects, nausea, headaches, so you can try them without any prescription, but you need to discuss with the doctor that you're using these botanicals. And supplements, there are different ones. Uh, one of them is called tryptophan, hydroxytryptophan, vitamin B complex and methionine. These ones are also supplements in capsules. There has been studies that show that help with anxiety, but they are not consistent. So some people who want to try something natural, they can try and, you know, not necessarily may work, but may not cause any harm. So let me talk about the resources. So there are resources, some of them are about information and some of them are about the chat rooms. So the information you want to read about it, the best ones is the American Psychiatry Association, the National Institute of Mental Health, and anxiety.org is a website that has all the information that a general person may need about anxiety. And there's chats that they are in English, and the chat is the helpfulchat.org, and the anxiety panic support.com chat. Those chats, uh, you can interact with therapists. Some of them, you can get a therapy online. There is a chart for that, and then you can have a therapy online. And some of them, you just with other patients who has anxiety, that share their experiences, and they share also techniques that they have done, or they have practiced to decrease the anxiety symptoms. I hope this is helpful.